he waded out a hundred feet into the river. But before he could attempt the biblical recreation and claim he was Jesus reborn, three huge crocodiles quickly swam up and <laughs> Yep. Today, we are here to check out amazingly stupid and dumb ways people have died. Let's get right to the good stuff and take a look at even more Darwin Award That's a really winners dumb way to die. Who themselves in the dumbest ways imaginable. <laughs> Permanent bedhead. What? Moving a mattress is no easy task. With the average mattress weighing up to 150 pounds and being pretty bulky, they need to be well strapped down when being transported on top of a van or car. This is kind of obviously to stop the wind catching them and tearing them off. Although this is some pretty basic thinking that didn't occur to a certain 20-year-old woman back in 2016. She and her friend were trying to transport a mattress, but the thing was too big to fit in their van. Their solution? One would ride on top of the mattress, pinning it to the roof of the van, while the other drove. What could possibly go wrong? No! A lot, it turned out. No! Unaware of how the laws of motion worked and massively overestimating the mattress surfer's strength, the whole thing flipped off as soon as the driver put their foot on the gas. The mattress hit the road, and so did our unlucky lady. I'm happy to say the mattress bounced back. Our mattress surfer, on the other hand, didn't. Struck speechless. Oh, that's dumb. Road rage ain't no joke. Oh, that's but it dumb. That's some dumb. Funny consequences if the events of September 12th, 2021, are anything to go by. At 1:30 a.m. on this Sunday morning, two drivers collided on the I-80 in California. It's not bad. Instead of taking their argument off to the side of the road, the drivers decided to commence arguing in the middle of the traffic lanes. In the early morning, they must have idiotically assumed that no one but them would be using the road. And they were dead wrong. A few minutes later, both men were struck by an oncoming car and were found unresponsive at the scene. Oh! That's certainly one way to park an argument. Damn, that's dumb! Scrap idea. Really? There are plenty of safe things you can source scrap metal from. Cars, old equipment, recycled cans, the list goes on. You know what isn't safe to source scrap metal from, though? Grenades. No! Specifically, rocket-propelled no! grenades, or RPGs for short. No! But this didn't occur to a man in Rio de Janeiro back in 2006, who was so hell-bent on getting his hands on some scrap metal, no! he'd do anything to crack open an old disused RPG he'd found. Did he suck the RPG? First, he tried driving over the explosive device with his car. No! And when that didn't work, he decided to carefully no! and considerately smash the thing open with a sledgehammer. No! To no one's surprise, the sledgehammer worked in a manner. Not only did it manage to open the grenade, but the force of the resulting explosion also opened up our man, six cars, and the repair shop he'd been working in. Damn! When police showed up, they found a phenomenal 14 more of these stored nearby. So even if that one hadn't exploded, there was a good chance one of the others would have. Talk about being destined for a Darwin Award. You a dumbass! Now, like I said, this is part 12 of a series. If you like it so far and want a part 13, be sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons down below. All done? Great. What incredible act of idiocy do we have next? There's no way. Is it a bird? Is it a plane? No. It's a... a lawyer? Ha! <laughs> there are funny. smart people, there are intelligent people, and then there are lawyers. Studying for a law degree and passing the bar exam are two of the hardest academic achievements anyone can accomplish. So you kind of assume they're the brightest of the bunch. I will consider but so. But not always. Back I don't in believe you. A young lawyer was attending an early 4th of July party at his office in Chicago. Apparently, he got into a heated debate with one of his colleagues about the Olympics. And mm -hmm. to settle their dispute, they agreed to have a race down a corridor of their building. Seems like a fun, safe solution, right? Yeah. Well, I should mention that our young lawyer needed glasses to see long distances because he had taken them off before the race so they didn't fall off his face. Oh, and also that his office was in a glass-paned high-rise building and the pair were racing around the 39th floor. You see where this is heading, yeah? I hope not. Well, our lawyer definitely didn't. Don't, don't. As he was running headlong down the corridor, the young lawyer lost his perspective and went crashing through one of the plate glass window panes. 
While he may have lost the race, he did make the 400-foot journey from the 39th floor to the ground floor in just six seconds. How did you lose the race? That's gotta be a new record, right? Dodging debts. Nobody likes getting to the end of the night in their local bar and realizing they have to pay their tab. Ordering drinks for everybody seemed like such a good idea four hours ago. Yeah. While most people just swallow their pride and pay up, back in 2001, it was reported that two gentlemen at a bar in Cairo decided not to do this. Instead, they skipped out on their $180 whiskey tab and tried to escape by diving into the River Nile nearby. Seems like a smart getaway. However, through most of Cairo, the Nile is around 1,000 feet wide, roughly the length of 13 tennis courts laid end to end. No! Now, I don't know about you, but I'd struggle to swim that distance sober, never mind having drunk $180 worth of whiskey. While one of the drunken duo just about managed to scramble his way to the far shore, where the police were waiting for him, the second misjudged his ability to swim that far and never made it to shore. Ah! That's one way to get out of paying your tab, I guess. That's one way to get it. I mean, you know, at least he didn't have to pay the bill, which is the important part. High on life. Now, in the U.S., you don't need a license to drive a ride on lawnmower, providing you're not taking it down a public road. You know what you do need a license to operate, though? A plane. I mean, seeing how complicated flying can be, you can all see why, right? While this clearly wasn't something that occurred to a father and son gardening duo, who back in 2000 had been hired to trim the fields over at New Mexico's Tucumcari Municipal Airport. But instead of riding their lawnmowers, the duo came up with the bright idea to take one of the aircraft for a joyride. So while left unsupervised, they sneakily stole a small two-person Urkoop plane, filled up the tanks, and then took off from the runway. They made it 150 feet into their ascent when suddenly the plane started to wobble. Now most pilots would know what to do in this situation. Unfortunately, neither the father nor son was a pilot. Neither did they have any type of pilot training or, to anyone's knowledge, any experience of flying a plane whatsoever. Stupid! As such, the plane nosedived into the ground and burst into flames, taking both idiots with it. Are they really dumb enough to think it'd just be like driving a mower, but in the air? Well, whatever they thought, this joyride ended in flames. Damn, yup! A real firecracker. Here's a question for you. If you wanted some firecrackers, you know, the little explosives that make a real loud banging noise, how would you go about acquiring some? The Mexicans! You just buy some, right? Like a yes! normal person? Well, according to an unconfirmed report from 2002, one man over in Croatia thought- the Mexicans have all the best fireworks around 4th of July, man. Tell me I'm wrong. But the idea of paying for firecrackers was far too safe and decided to make his own for some New Year's celebrations. No, no. Now, by using no. whatever he had to hand. Don't you be stupid. Which turned out to be a chainsaw. Don't you stupid idiot. Hand grenade. What? I don't think I have to explain that sawing into an explosive device is a really bad idea. One that cost the city at his life. But it won him a Darwin Award, so at least he still had something to celebrate. That was obviously a successful suicide, man. Gone fishing. Have you ever heard of blast fishing? Like the name suggests, it's where people use explosives to stun or kill entire schools of fish out in open water for easy pickings. It's a very dangerous and largely illegal practice. But it'd take more than that to stop a couple of Illinois idiots from indulging in a little illegal Sunday afternoon blast fishing back in 1998. The two friends hopped in a 14-foot aluminum boat and sailed out onto the waters of Fox Lake. Aluminum? Once they were far enough out, they lit up a quarter stick of dynamite threw it into the water, and waited for the fish to float up to them. What they hadn't realized was that they'd thrown the dynamite downwind of the boat, so a few seconds later their boat was blown right over the dynamite. The explosion ripped a huge hole in their boat, sinking it about 100 yards from shore. Now, it's unclear whether one of them was knocked unconscious by the blast or more likely couldn't swim, but either way, he never made it back to shore. At least now he knows how those poor fish felt. Wow! Stupider. That joke was in poor taste. <laughs> Skarma. There are a few things you need to go skiing. Protective wear, 
the right equipment, and good visibility. And as you probably guessed, the next guy who earned himself a Darwin Award had none of these. Back in 2002, a 22-year-old idiot and a few of his friends decided to hike up Mammoth Mountain in Nevada at 3 a.m. for a little out-of-hour skiing session. Being a spur-of-the-moment decision, our spontaneous skier hadn't brought anything to ski down on, so he decided to improvise by ripping some of the safety padding off of one of the ski lift towers, which usually protects skiers that accidentally hit the big metal poles on their way down the slope. Padding in hand, he made the huge hike to the top, hopped on, and slid down. He was having the time of his life, right up until he came to a dead stop. Literally. The Battle of Stalingrad has begun in Enlisted, the free Second World War online shooter. Take part as either the USSR or Germany and experience this legendary battle. The late It turned out our stupid sledder in the pitch black had slammed straight into the lift tower he'd removed the pad from. Gee, if only there'd been, I don't know, some sort of protective padding there so that this exact thing didn't happen. Honestly, I despair. I really do. Yeah, he a dumbass. Check what you're taking. Now, I've never stolen as much as a stick of gum in my entire life. But I've even I know that if you're going to steal something, you should probably double check what you're stealing first. Otherwise, you'll end up like the five idiots from the Czech Republic who joined the Darwin Awards back in 2008. These five dum-dums decided to break into an abandoned factory in the town of Klodno to steal some scrap metal. They quickly got to work breaking down a couple of upright steel girders they found. What they hadn't realized is that these girders were the only thing supporting the factory's roof above them. What? Once dismantled, the roof obviously collapsed. No! crushing two of the thieves and injuring the three others. So if after that story you're still set on a life of scrap metal crime, remember, gravity doesn't care if it's an accident or if you're just an idiot. Got him! Bad bungee. Oh no. Have you ever been bungee jumping? No. It's an exhilarating experience. I don't care. I'm jumping off a bridge or a cliff with nothing but a big elastic cord attached to your ankles to stop you from hitting the ground is pretty dangerous. Which is why you should always do it with professionals that have all the right gear, licenses, and insurance. The exact opposite of what one thrill seeker did back in 1997. This 22 year old fast food worker from Fairfax County, Virginia decided to seek some cheap thrills by bungeeing off a 70 foot railroad trestle bridge. The only problem was that he didn't have access to a professionally made super thick bungee cord. So he just made one himself. Can you guess what he made it out of, though? Bungee cords! No! You know, the little elastic straps you use to keep car trunks closed or hook a sleeping bag to a backpack? No! Yeah, those. Somehow, he thought strapping a bunch of them together would be enough to hold his weight when he jumped off the trestle. And you know what? It might have been, had he made the rope short enough. In an astonishingly moronic move, our thrill seeker made the rope too long and ended up making very close friends with the pavement 70 foot below. Pancake style. What? A tough act to swallow. Back in 1999, the most amazing Darwin Award of all time, in my opinion, was given out to an unnamed performer from Bonn, Germany. The performer was apparently a professional sword swallower and was able to swallow a wide range of long, ridiculous objects like swords, balloons, and even large umbrellas. Except one day while he was showing off his skills with an umbrella, he apparently hit the automatic release button on the umbrella's handle. The umbrella opened while still lodged in his throat and the avid entertainer didn't live to perform an encore. It almost sounds plausible and while the performer earned an official Darwin Award, there are several holes in the story. For a start, the first report of this surfaced in 1997 not 1999. Since then, multiple reports of the same story have surfaced in different years with the exact same scenario happening to a poor performer named Boris in New Jersey back in 2007. Except there are no obituaries or records to suggest any of these stories are real. The sword swallowing community even came together to claim it's just not possible to fit a folded umbrella down one's esophagus, as it would be too wide. As such, this is almost definitely an urban legend. That said, have you ever seen someone swallow a whole umbrella tip first? Maybe you have a photo of it? 
If you do, send it through to stories at beamazed.com and I'll be sure to feature you in an upcoming video, providing we don't yeet ourselves out of the gene pool before then. Speaking of which... zippity doo -da. Brits abroad don't have the greatest reputation. Stereotypically, they can be loud, obnoxious, and, on occasion, so stupid that they end up earning themselves a Darwin Award. At least that's what one Brit did up in the Italian Alps back in 2002. The 49-year-old climber was with his family, enjoying the incredible views from the mountains near Belluno in northern Italy. And then, in what I can only describe as an utterly insane move, he snapped his mountain climbing clasp onto a disused cable car cable and tried to slide down it using his hands. For some reason, he seemed to think he'd be able to control his super steep descent using only his hands, and while everyone around him, even passersby, tried to stop him, he ignored them and did it anyways. Perhaps the cable still had a layer of grease on it from its old cable car days, or maybe he just didn't have the strength he thought he did. Well, whatever it was, he quickly lost control, which saw him smash into several rocky outcrops before coming to a dead and sticky stop on a metal support pylon about 650 feet down the cable. Yeah, when you're about to do something so dumb that a bunch of strangers butt in to try and stop you, that's probably the point at which you should reevaluate your life choices. Unless you're gunning for a Darwin Award, that is. And he won it! Good job! Jailbird learns to fly. Oh boy. Jailbreaks look really cool in films, and are almost always pulled off without a hitch. But in reality, they're much more dangerous and foolish than they appear on the big screen, as proven by an Allegheny County Jail inmate back in 1997. He decided that instead of staying to face the music, he needed to make a speedy exit. So he tied together a couple of bedsheets he'd pilfered from other inmates, broke the supposedly shatterproof window of his cell, and then used the bedsheet rope to rappel down the outer jail wall. But there were just two problems with his plan. The first was that his makeshift rope was about 60 feet long, but his cell was on the 17th story. So Damn! his rope was roughly 90 feet short of the ground. Damn! The second was that he hadn't cleared the window frame of the remaining glass shards, and these cut the bed sheets as he was climbing down, eventually shearing his makeshift rope in two and sending him plummeting more than eight stories to his dumb demise. Talk about being criminally stupid. <laughs> slide of his life. So we've established that people can be pretty dumb, but you know what makes them even more dumb? Alcohol. Yeah. And it was this devil juice that saw a 25-year-old man from Calgary, Canada, given a Darwin Award back in the year 2000. He and his buddies had been out drinking and they decided to continue the party at a friend's apartment complex. That's when one of them challenged the rest of the group by saying, who's gonna ride the in-house water slide? Spoiler alert, it was not in fact a water slide, but the complex's garbage chute. Unfortunately, our man of the hour drunkenly took up the offer. What he obviously didn't realize in his drunken state was that there would be an industrial trash compactor waiting for him at the other end. Although that was the least of his worries as the chute down was a near vertical 12-story drop, over 100 feet. Well, by winning a Darwin Award, at least his passing didn't go to waste. Unlike his body. God help us. There's nothing wrong with following a faith, but following one to your death isn't worth it. Yeah, it is, man. Pastor Jonathan M. Thwethwa supposedly discovered. According to multiple tabloids back in 2017, this pastor of the Saint of the Last Days Church in White River, Impamalanga, promised his congregation he would demonstrate the strength of his faith by walking on water. In the whole week leading up to the event, he fasted and prayed. And when that fateful morning came, he waded out a hundred feet into the river. But before he could attempt the biblical recreation and claim he was Jesus reborn, three huge crocodiles quickly swam up and were <laughs> yep, somehow Pastor and Pethra had missed the memo that this... <laughs> And 
with good reason, apparently. Church deacon and Cozy supposedly said that after 30 minutes, there was nothing left of the pastor except his sandals and underwear. Tabloids all over the world rushed to report the story, but something wasn't quite right. The first tabloids to report the story were in Zimbabwe, but White River is in neighboring South Africa. How would anyone in Zimbabwe have gotten the story first? It turned out the whole story was just a spoof, something someone in the newsroom had cooked up for sensationalism. But the fact that so many news outlets and people believed it tells us a lot about how little faith we all have left in humanity. Shit, I believe that shit, nigga. That shit would've been funny as hell, man. Getting closer to God. Anyone who does charity work is an incredible human being, in my humble opinion. But while done with the best intentions, some feats done in the name of fundraising can be straight up stupid. Case in point, we'll rewind to 2008 and head over to Paranagua, Brazil. This is where a Catholic priest was busy filling up a thousand helium balloons. I thought he was about to say that's where a Catholic priest was busy filling up a thousand children, but I'm glad that's not the case. It's just balloons. <laughs> We're going to edit that out. He was planning to break the 19-hour balloon cluster flight record to raise money for a spiritual rest area for truck drivers in Paranagua. He'd made an attempt earlier that year using 600 balloons, but it only managed to stay airborne for four hours and had drifted 16 miles to San Antonio, Argentina. Convinced he just needed more balloons, the persistent priest, who was an experienced skydiver, packed a flotation device, five days of food and water, a thermal flight suit, a parachute, a helmet, several cell phones, and a GPS device. Seems like he thought of everything. Only thing was he didn't actually know how to use the GPS device. Not only that, when he was released, the weather was really overcast, so people on the ground lost sight of him very quickly. He was planning on landing in Dorados, some 550 miles away in more central South America. But the thing with balloons is that they follow the wind. So without any way of steering himself, when a rogue gust of wind blew the flying father off course, he was carried out to sea. Later that evening, perhaps realizing he couldn't work his GPS, he rang the military police, who confirmed he was actually about 16 miles out from the islands of Tamborete. And after that, they never heard from him again. Clusters of balloons were found in the ocean the next day, and three months later, the bottom half of the floating father was discovered 62 miles out from Makaya. What? So what happened? Had he risen too fast too quickly and run out of oxygen when he got too high? Had the balloons failed and sent him crashing into the ocean? Had he been caught in a storm? It seems he didn't realize he was that far out over the ocean until it was too late, and then crash landed. He might have survived for a short time out in the water, but with his cell phones and GPS waterlog, not even he could have survived three months out in the open sea. Well, at least in his final days, this priest literally got a little closer to God. Which of these awardees do you think was the real winner? Despite all the advancements of modern society, people still find ways to fall through the safety nets and put themselves in danger. Some people are so dumb, no amount of health and safety regulations can keep them around past their self-inflicted expiry date. Yeah. So without further ado, let's marvel at some of the unfortunate souls who've selected themselves out of the gene pool, winning a posthumous Darwin Award in the process. Dumpster Drank. Of all what? the places you should never gather a nice what? refreshing drink from, a landfill site is pretty high on the list. What? Or at least it should be. But for one couple from Belarus, a landfill seemed just as good as a convenience store for acquiring drinks back in October 2020. You found a woman to go with you? I ain't got no excuse for being single. Yeah, I do. I enjoy mouth jobs. While scouring the local dump, as you do, a man found this bottle, filled with a mysterious murky liquid, and Bro! took the bottle home to share its contents with his wife. Bro! It seemed the pair assumed it contained some perfectly safe to drink homemade hooch, and like a nice bottle of wine after a hard day's work, popped it open to share. What? Unsurprisingly, the next day, the couple became extremely ill, and while emergency services were called, it proved too late. The concoction in the bottle, it turned out, Come had on. indeed been homemade alcohol, but oh. its owner had seemingly disposed of it after realizing it wasn't very good at all. 
In fact, it was completely poisonous. As a result, the couple kicked the bucket together, after what might be considered the worst romantic dinner of all time. Pretty dumb, right? On the fence Some people will go to great lengths to protect their personal possessions, but one Brazilian man's desperation to keep his car safe from thieves back in 2010 proved to be his downfall. As robberies were becoming increasingly frequent in his local area, the fellow decided to keep his car protected by building a miniature electric fence around it. Only what? this wasn't any old touch it and get a slightly uncomfortable warning shock kind of fence. This one was amped up and designed to hurt a lot. For a while, it seemed to work well, seeing as nobody stole the car. But things soon came to a shocking conclusion when, on one occasion, he forgot he'd left the electric fence turned on when he attempted to move it aside to get into his car. He was electrocuted, and he'd built his contraption with such a high current that it killed him. Talk about being your own worst enemy. A refreshing swim. How far would you go to save your phone? Would you be crazy enough to dive into an icy, partially frozen river to retrieve it? Yeah, I would. I'm not gonna sit here and tell a lot of y'all. Well, one man from Detroit did exactly that in February 2020. While fishing through a large hole he'd cut out of the ice, the fellow accidentally dropped his phone into the water. No. Clearly lacking in any notion no. of self-preservation, no. he dove straight no. into the hole after no. Unfortunately, he failed to realize that sudden submersion in ice-cold water can be pretty bad for the human body. It can send you into shock, can instantly paralyze your muscles if you haven't received training beforehand, and can even cause a heart attack due to intense constriction of your blood vessels. Whether one of these physiological problems took hold or whether he simply became disoriented under the ice remains unclear. All we know for sure is that he didn't re-emerge until several hours later, when emergency responders pulled his lifeless body from the water. We can only assume he must have had a glorious collection of cute animal pics on his phone to make jumping into icy doom seem worth it. Oh my god. <laughs> I would not do that. Lesson not learned. As the COVID-19 pandemic came into full swing in 2020, it brought a lot of Darwin Award contenders out of the woodwork. One example occurred at a Serbian Orthodox church in November 2020, following the death of a high-ranking bishop. The bishop's death had been caused by coronavirus, yet the funeral held at the church showed no regard at all for the types of conditions that led to such an infection. The funeral was essentially a checklist of everything you shouldn't do if you want to avoid the disease. There was large crowds in an enclosed space, countless people being fed Holy Communion from the same unwashed spoon, and of course, countless people kissing the hand of the recently deceased, who, I must reiterate, died of coronavirus. On top of that, there were only a handful of people wearing masks. In a twist you probably saw coming, almost immediately after the funeral, the church patriarch who'd organized and led the event also became seriously ill with COVID-19. He too died, having willingly failed to respect the advice of scientists on one of the most serious health disasters of the past 100 years. I just hope his funeral was a little more restrained. Clothes lined. There are many dangers facing motorcyclists on the road, but one of the greatest of all is a rider's own recklessness. What the fuck? This was proven one morning in 2008, when one motorcyclist took the ride of a lifetime near Minnesota Key in Florida. Witnesses reported seeing the risky rider, wearing nothing but swim trunks and sneakers, speeding towards the Minnesota Key drawbridge, which was in the process of being raised up. He ignored the flashing red lights warning drivers to stay away from the bridge and instead attempted to accelerate, hoping to jump the ever-growing gap. Newsflash, he didn't make it. He'd failed to spot the safety gate arms, which had already descended. He crashed head first straight into one of the gates and was instantly swept from his bike and onto the asphalt, while the bike itself continued up the ramp across the gap to the other side. While the rider failed to survive the ordeal, at least one of them made it across. <laughs> Proving a point. 
On May 19, 1885, a man named Robert Emmett Odlum set out to be the first man to jump into New York City's East River from the Brooklyn Bridge. His reasons for this strange aspiration were surprisingly well-meaning for the most part. First and foremost, he sought to prove that, against the commonly held beliefs of the time, people did not die by simply falling through the air. He hoped this demonstration would encourage people to be willing to jump from burning buildings into a safety net in the incident of a fire, as people were too distrusting of this idea at the time. He also hoped to achieve some fame in proving it was safe. But unfortunately, any hopes he'd had of reassuring people about the safety of leaping from great heights were soon dashed when it came time to jump. As Odlum leapt from the bridge's roadway, 130 feet up, he attempted to stay straight in the air, but a strong wind blew him into a diagonal angle of descent. This meant, when he eventually struck the water, the angle of impact caused some serious damage. Slapping the water at approximately 62 miles per hour, it exerted enough force to rupture his spleen, liver, and kidneys, and break several of his ribs. The official cause of death, however, was declared to be concussion. Damn. On the bright side, people now know that rapidly falling doesn't kill you as much as the landing. In the words of British TV legend Jeremy Clarkson, speed has never killed anyone. Suddenly becoming stationary, that's what gets you. Yo, yeah. that's real. Hazard prevention. Sometimes you really have to wonder about people's sense of logic. Case in point, two guys who suddenly landed on the sense of hazard awareness after doing something incredibly dangerous and stupid back in 2002. In a farm field in Pennsylvania, two friends were practicing their marksmanship by shooting, not at bottles or cans, but the electrical insulators holding power lines aloft overhead. After shooting six of the insulators off of two utility poles, a live, high-voltage wire fell to the ground risking setting the entire surrounding field ablaze. Suddenly seized by an uncharacteristic sense of health and safety, one of the men rushed over to the wire and attempted to pick it up to move it to prevent danger. What? The instant he seized it in his hand, the powerful current passed through him and he was fatally electrocuted. The lesson? If you're going to suddenly grow a conscience, maybe try doing it before you do something lethally stupid. Yeah. Safety first. The oh saying, boy. practice what you preach, has never been more ironically fitting than in the case of one man who met his untimely demise in Australia in 2017. While filming a forklift safety video, the owner of a safety training school was thrown from the forklift he was driving and fatally crushed by his payload. An investigation revealed that, despite what the intentions of the video had been, the man had broken several crucial rules to forklift safety. He was driving over rough, uneven terrain at high speed, all while not wearing a seatbelt. Alongside an unhealthy sprinkling of driver error, it proved that sometimes you really should listen to your own advice. Wow! Message! As most rational people can easily conclude, safety advice displayed at dangerous locations tend to be there for a reason. Not-so-bright people, however, often seem to have problems grasping this idea. This was proven by one woman on a pleasure trip to a natural waterfall at a tourist hotspot in Kaka, Colombia in January 2020. While searching for the perfect selfie angle, the woman ignored safety warnings about wandering too close to the edge of the waterfall. Paying more attention to her phone than where she was headed, she ended up plummeting over the waterfall's edge, straight down into the boulder and rock-filled pool below. The hard landing caused enough damage to her skull to set her expiry date to right there, right then. Ugh, how many misguided lives will be lost before people finally learn selfies are never worth dying over? Vending Fatality at some point, you may have heard machine. you shouldn't shake a vending machine because it might fall on you. But nobody ever believes that's ever actually happened, right? Well, as it turns out, it actually did happen back in 1984 in Safety Harbor, Florida. As a newspaper article from the time recounts, a man had been attempting to get a can of soda from the vending machine in his apartment complex's recreation center. Whether he paid his cash and the machine failed to dispense his goods, or whether he just decided to shake it to try and get a free drink, remains unclear to this day. 
All that's known for sure is that an hour later, the thirsty fella was found utterly crushed with a vending machine on top of him. Yeesh. Going by this tale, if you want to stay safe, Safety Harbor is not the place to go, especially if you're thirsty. Troublesome Transport In 2020, a poorly chosen seating arrangement on a bus resulted in the unexpected demise of several people in Manitou, India. While being transported to a wedding venue on a very overcrowded bus, several of the guests climbed up onto the rooftop for the ride. This was, of course, already a very risky idea, from the risk of falling off alone. But it wasn't a fall that proved to be these rooftop riders' ruin. Their downfall came, instead, in the form of some high-tension, relatively low-hanging electrical wires. At their lofty perch, the riders were at head level with the wires, and before they had the chance to react, three of them struck the exposed wire directly and were electrocuted. Oh One God. was killed instantly. Another succumbed to his injuries later, while the third survived, albeit thoroughly fried. Next time, I've got a feeling he'll just wait for the next bus to come instead. More Watching the skies. If an opportunity presented itself for you to communicate with extraterrestrials, would you take it? And no. if so, how far would you go to make no. sure you didn't let the chance pass you by? Well, no. one woman put the chance to commune with little green men above her own safety back in 1982. Believing she'd been contacted by some type of intergalactic power, she convinced a willing companion to accompany her in carrying out the instructions of her alien contacts. She claimed they'd commanded her to drive out to an isolated location in the northeastern Minnesota wilderness and await further instruction. Assuming this would be a hugely significant moment in the interstellar advancement of humankind, the pair did exactly that, despite the extremely snowy winter weather. Once parked up in the designated location, they dutifully awaited the arrival of their extraterrestrial acquaintances. And they waited. And waited. And waited. Unfortunately, their food supplies ran out after a week, and they lost access to water when the nearby lake froze over. Still, they refused to leave their post, on the off chance that the aliens appeared while they were gone, putting total faith in the idea that the aliens would appear before anything bad happened to either of them, they stayed in the freezing cold. Did they think that the aliens had water and food with them? With nothing to eat or drink. Eventually, frozen, starving, and fatally dehydrated, the woman died. Shortly after, the man accompanying her, in his much weakened state and with the car having been rendered unusable by the icy conditions, crawled through a quarter mile of snow to save himself. He survived, but his alien contacting partner did not, and their little green guests never showed up. I really hope you smashed, bro. I guess the aliens must have got the wrong address. Best Seats in the House for as long as there have been sports events requiring tickets, there have also been people trying to find ways to watch for free. This unfortunate tendency to save a bit of cash proved to be the quite literal downfall of a number of football fans in San Francisco back in 1900. To avoid the ticket fees, between 400 and 500 supporters clambered onto the roof of a glass factory so they could view a game taking place at San Francisco's nearby Old no! Recreation Park Stadium. But no! in a twist of fate that somehow occurred to none of them as a possibility, the factory roof proved incapable of supporting all that weight. 20 minutes after kickoff, not only did the roof collapse, but it also sent the revelers falling directly onto the blazing hot brick cover of a furnace vat filled with molten glass. Oh to paint a picture of how hot this furnace was, several of the men who fell onto the cover instantly caught a blaze. 22 of the participants in this ill-thought-out plan were sent shuffling off this mortal coil from the incident, while 100 more suffered serious injuries. While people today may still not have learned their lesson to always pay for tickets, they seem to have learned not to pile en masse onto factory roofs in the years since. Deadliest Catch being a magician can be a dangerous job at times, 
particularly if you specialize in risky-looking illusions. While many classic nail-biting tricks are often much safer than they seem, some of them are genuinely hazardous if not followed correctly, like catching a bullet tricks. Now, obviously, tricks of this category, under normal circumstances, are never actually supposed to involve real bullets being fired by a magician's assistant. But in 1889, an early performer of this trick had a serious mishap on stage. Magician and cabinet maker Michael Hattal took to the stage, promising his audience he could catch a speeding bullet using nothing more than the American flag wrapped around his body. He called an assistant up to the stage and asked him to pick two two pieces of ammunition from an ammo box for Hattal to load into a rifle. At this point, Hattal would usually switch out the rounds for blanks, but on this occasion, he accidentally swapped the real ammo for more ammo. The volunteer took aim and fired, delivering a fatal blow to the unfortunate performer. Luckily, Hattal survived just long enough to take responsibility for the blunder, clearing the volunteer's name on his deathbed. On the bright side, he certainly gave the audience a performance they'd remember. Man vs. Cactus Staying on the topic of like firearm mishaps now, we have the story of one man who lost a shootout against a stationary target. In 1982, a couple of petty criminals headed out into Arizona's Sonoran Desert for a decidedly dumb purpose, shooting at cacti. Their targets of choice were the local saguaro cacti, which can grow well over 40 feet tall, a fact which should have probably raised some alarm bells. But it didn't, and the tremendous size and weight of each cactus only made them more appealing targets. The first cactus was shot down without incident, thanks to the powerful blast of a 16-gauge shotgun. But the second target was larger, at almost 30 feet tall. One of the cactus vandals moved into point-blank range to deliver the kill shot, pulled the trigger, and brought huge chunks of the two-ton spiky behemoth raining down upon himself. He was killed almost instantly by the weight of the spiky chunks that landed on him, while his buddy lived to share the tale. I suppose the moral of the story is, don't bring a gun to a cactus fight. Something to lean on In August 2020, an attempt to pose for a picture in an unusual spot ended very badly, showing just why you should be careful what you lean on. The photo opportunity in question occurred for one man at a large statue of a cross in Sao Paulo, Brazil. The man climbed up the central concrete column of the cross and onto one of the arms, where he posed for a picture giving a thumbs up. However, he overestimated the strength of the upper beam, which he leant against while the picture was being taken. As he leant on it, the beam came loose and toppled right over, sending it and the man falling straight down to the ground. A particularly nasty landing waited for him at the bottom, and to make matters worse, the heavy beam landed right on top of him. With the man's religious photo opportunity ultimately proving fatal, if there is a god, it looks like he doesn't appreciate selfies. Damn! Alligator Damn. affection. Sometimes, the universe seems to have a funny tendency of punishing people who put too much faith in their own good luck. Parts Somebody trying to get a blowjob from an alligator? Particularly those who willingly put themselves in unbelievably dangerous situations. Like one woman who put too much faith in her ability to not get eaten by hungry wild animals in Kiowa Island, South Carolina in May 2020. While in a drunken state, the woman decided to get waist deep in a local pond, which she knew was home to an alligator. This was despite the friend who watched from horror at the shore warning her the gator had been observed chowing down on a live deer a few days earlier. Instead of taking that as a sign of the gator's killing power, the woman instead retorted, I don't look like a deer, and waited over to pet the reptile. Dumbass. The gator, of course, wasn't too keen on this idea, and grabbed her with its powerful jaws. Miraculously, the woman managed to break free and began wading back to the shore, telling her friend, I guess I won't do that again, and she was technically right, because she wouldn't have the chance. Why? Because the gator grabbed her again while she was retreating and dragged her below the water to her demise. Unfortunately, one very important realization came all too late to this woman. You don't mess with alligators. 
a dangerous mix. In the world of lethal combinations, there are few dangerous pairings more obvious than water and electricity, but some yeah. people totally failed to grasp that fact. Like one man in New York who grew impatient after a storm damaged some power lines along his street, leaving him without electricity. Somehow, he'd landed on the idea that he'd be able to fix the problem easily if he could just remove the downed wires and replace them himself. Assuming he knew better than the emergency workers guarding the downed wires to keep the public safe, the man repeatedly attempted to gain access to them, but after being shooed away several times, he decided to wait until the cover of darkness, at which point he returned to the site. With plastic bags on his feet for what he must have assumed was total protection from any electric threats, he began his idea of a fix. Attempting to fast-track the repairs, he tried to cut off part of the downed wire with an industrial power saw, while absentmindedly standing on the wet, puddle-covered floor left by the storm. As his saw reached the metal core of the wire, which he'd failed to realize was still live, his body and the wet puddle his feet were in provided the perfect circuit to the ground. He was electrocuted with a full force of 4,800 volts. Needless to say, while his determination to help was commendable, a human body just wasn't made to endure that kind of a shock. In a moment of lethal stupidity, the DIY oh why moment proved fatal, well and truly earning this man a Darwin Award. Number 20. Livewire When inmate Michael Godwin had his death penalty commuted to a life sentence, he was grateful to be able to walk away from death row. But it seems that karma had other plans. One night in 1989, he discovered the television in his cell was broken and, deciding to fix it himself, embarked on a little DIY. Foolishly, he thought it would be a great idea to use his teeth instead of a wire cutter. Biting down on a live wire, he electrocuted himself, not helped by the fact that he was sitting on a metal toilet at the time. Godwin no! may have escaped the electric chair, but it seems destiny was intent on seeing him die by electrocution. How you gonna escape death row and give yourself the electric chair? Come on, son! Number 19. Airless Airhead when a Brazilian farmer discovered a beehive on his property in 2002, he knew precisely two things. Bees can sting, and they need to be removed with fire. No one knows why he decided that fire was his best option. No! All we do know is that he fashioned a makeshift helmet from a plastic bag to save himself from what? both the smoke and the bee stings. No! But besides plastic bag to save you from bee stings and fire? With all his careful planning, he didn't bother to think that he might have to breathe and failed to poke air holes into the plastic bag. Bigger. When he didn't return home, his wife set out to find him and soon discovered him suffocated beneath the beehive. He was untouched by the bees, though. Number 18. Wow! Chimney Grenade The bees let this idiot die alone! One afternoon in 2005, Marco decided to clean the chimney in his workshop, but when he tried to use his simple broom, he realized it was too small for the job. Clearly, he had to improvise. He decided what he needed was a chain to pull the broom through the chimney and a heavy object to weigh it down. No. Looking in his workshop, he thought he'd found the perfect thing, a grenade. What? All he had to do now was weld it to the broom and chain. No! Except he failed to think about what could happen as he switched on his welding equipment. As soon as the flame met the grenade, it exploded, killing him instantly. What did you think would happen when you set fire to a live grenade? I the chimney, know. however, was left completely untouched by the blast. Number 17. Behind Enema Lines Texas <gasps> shop owner Michael was an alcoholic, but not an ordinary one. No! Due to a painful throat condition, he couldn't drink through his mouth. This meant he had to find other ways to consume no! his liquor, and his wife said he soon became addicted to enemas. No! This popular method is no! far more dangerous, as alcohol is absorbed directly through the capillaries in the rectum. So one night he wanted to get blind drunk and decided no! the only way to do it was to pour 100 fluid ounces of sherry up his rear end. What? what he didn't know was that after he'd passed out, the alcohol kept absorbing and he was dead by the morning. The toxicology report stated he had a blood alcohol level of 0.47%, meaning he'd pretty much embalmed himself. Number six, <laughs> 16. Parking brake fail. When we're constantly reminded to recycle, plastic bags can be a source of annoyance. 
So when a 58-year-old Australian woman was driving to the grocery store and thought she'd forgotten her plastic bags, she promptly stopped her car to check the trunk. If only she was more worried about her parking than she was about her grocery bags, she would have remembered to put the handbrake on. As she checked the trunk, the car began rolling backwards, crushing her to death. Somehow, she managed to run herself over. How you run yourself over with your own car, bitch? You gonna die in slow motion? No! Number 15, Irresponsible. A yeah. Roman ooh, 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 I'm a guess on this one. Someone had sex using their ear as a orifice. Don't ask me why I know about that, but I'm just saying. A Canadian man in 2002 decided he would skip checking the local train schedules and instead deduce if the train was coming through the power of his own ears. Stupid! Lying on the railway do line, he pressed no. his ears to the tracks to hear if the train was approaching. Clearly, his hearing wasn't all he thought it was because he never heard it coming. He was hit by an oncoming express train and died immediately. You stupid Number 14, Lava Bro. La Vida Loca. Lava Don't you just hate it when Loca. your lava lamp doesn't heat up quickly enough? Well, 24-year-old Philip did. After plugging in his lava lamp and waiting a few minutes, he was disappointed to see that nothing was happening. Eager to get it working, he decided to speed up the process by placing it on a hot stove. What? But with the contents of a lava lamp only being designed to withstand temperatures of up to 40 degrees, it quickly overheated and exploded. Poor Philip was killed when the glass from the lamp shattered and penetrated his heart. Not oh so groovy. Number 13, Under Pressure. Two bored comrades in a Romanian aluminum factory decided to have some fun with what an air hose actually used for industrial machinery. When blowing dust off their clothes became boring, they cranked things up a notch and decided to remove their Yep, see, they took off all the clothes, they were blowing other stuff. Their clothes entirely. Things quickly moved below the belt when one of the guys decided he was going to see what happened when he pumped six bars of atmospheric pressure into his anus. How did we get there? How did we go from, oh, we're filling in all this air. So you know what? I'm going to shove this right up my rectum and set that shit on full blast. What is up with butt stuff? I don't understand. Come on. Not only did he break employment regulations, but he also broke right through his intestinal tract and he died within minutes from severe internal hemorrhaging. Oh! Number 12, Was it Danger one Zone. In 2017, two United States Navy pilots got a little too carried away with Top Gun when they decided to completely abandon safety regulations to perform daredevilish stunts. Reaching astonishing speeds while flying as low as 210 feet, a good 300 feet below their minimum permitted altitude, things were bound to take a downward turn as they swapped controls back and forth. Descending no. too low and slow, one of the pilots traded off controls to his co-pilot but it was too late. The T-45C Goshawk crashed before they could safely eject themselves. Instructing pilot Lieutenant Birch was fond of the phrase, there are old pilots and there are bold pilots. He failed to mention that there are also outrageously dumb ones. Number 11, Cruise Control. The fastest human can run over 27 miles per hour, but that's only after accelerating during a run-up. A Dutch teenager in 2004 thought he could do better than that and get close to that speed straight away. In a bid to impress his friends, he set his car to cruise control at 20 miles per hour and told them he was going to jump out and run alongside the car no! before jumping back in and driving Wait. away. But his shocked friends could only look on as he stepped out the moving car and immediately smashed his head on the tarmac. He died the following day. Number 10 treasure hunt. You know how hard it is for me not to laugh at that last death? I'm gonna wait until after the video. I'm gonna laugh off camera. Described as the world's largest treasure hunt, the geocaching app allows people to follow online clues and find small treasure boxes known as geocaches hidden in their area. Sounds like harmless fun until someone decides to head down a flooded waterway in search of trinkets. When meteorologists warned the Czech Republic of impending rainstorms, most people paid attention. But not this group of geocachers who thought it would be clever to climb into an underground waterworks tunnel. It's Although not. two members of the group survived, two others were swept away with one young man still reported missing. Number 9. Dying for a Smoke Nobody likes long bus journeys. They're cramped and boring. Not to mention you're basically sharing a tin can with dozens of strangers and their farts. One Scottish woman especially hated the idea of spending 12 hours stuck on a coach from Glasgow to London without a cigarette. 
Passengers reported that she grew increasingly agitated and watched in horror as she began throwing herself at the passenger door. The bus was traveling at 60 miles per hour when she tumbled out into the road before falling under the wheels of the bus. Smoking really does kill. Number 8 Hey man, that's real stuff. Smoking ruined my marriage and it sexually assaulted my ex-girlfriend too. People don't understand the dangers of, of cigarette smoke, man. Footrest. <laughs> Most people go to the movies to see the drama unfold on the screen, not beside them. When a local man booked tickets in the VIP area of the cinema complex, he was hoping for a good time. What he got instead was a ticket to the Darwin Awards. After dropping his phone beneath the seat, he tried to retrieve it, only to get his head wedged inside the footrest. If this wasn't bad enough, he then suffered a cardiac arrest and died in hospital. Number seven, Victoria Falls. 50-year-old Michael was a clever man. Not only was he a college headmaster, he was also a respected geography lecturer on the conference's circuit. While on a trip to the Victoria Falls Bridge, he was happily taking photos of his girlfriend when he dropped his glasses over the edge. Thinking he wouldn't be able to enjoy the view of the glorious Victoria Falls without them, he tried to retrieve them, only to fall 40 what? feet to his death. Number six, killer Stupid. whalebone. This historic entry into the Darwin Awards sees another clever man, Founding father of the USA, Governor Morris, come to an untimely end through an eye-watering DIY medical procedure. When Morris began suffering from a blockage in his urethra, he took matters into his own hands. Inserting a whalebone into his urethra, all he managed to do was give himself a deadly infection. He died November 6th, 1816, probably feeling pretty silly. You shoved a sharp object into your penis? Number five. Distracted driver. 58-year-old Clifford Jones was driving without a seatbelt. He was also driving without pants. When a regular drive just wasn't interesting enough, he decided to watch a bit of adult content on his phone and- Yo, homie beat his meat while he was driving? I might have to uh, research that one for you guys. Make like a video. Have some fun. If only he'd kept his hands on the wheel. With the blood rushing away from his head, he grew increasingly distracted and lost control of his car. As it crashed, he hurtled through the sunroof and died on impact. Number four, posing with a grenade. Faking a smile, posing with angry animals, posing with a primed grenade, all things people will do for attention online. Yes, you heard me right. In 2017, Alexander Sasha Chechik from Russia pulled the pin out of a hand grenade while in his car and posted photographs of himself holding it to his girlfriend, probably as a way to show off his balls of brainless steel. A source who spoke to the Russian news service reporting the incident said, the guy didn't manage to insert the hand grenade pin back in. The pin is the safety mechanism. It's the lever on the side of the firing mechanism that activates the grenade when released. However, it's still not worth risking it by removing the pen. Police categorized his death as an accident and not suicide, as they believed he thought it wouldn't explode as long as he didn't throw it. Number three, bear selfie. Prabhu Batara from India was on his way home from a wedding when he spotted a black bear. Seeing this as a great photo opportunity, he got close to the bear and attempted to take a selfie. Mother as he did, the bear mauled him. He died shortly after due to his injuries. My advice, stay far away from bears. They may be cute, but if you photograph them at an angle that makes them look fat, it's game over. Number two, sawing into a grenade. Two pathologists at a German symposium dinner told the tale of a man who stumbled across a World War II grenade. Instead of staying well clear, he wanted to open it up to see how it worked. Back home, he placed it inside a vise and tried to saw it perfectly in half. The saw detonated the grenade and the man died from a fatal head injury. Come Upon post-mortem, it was discovered there was very little brain matter left inside his skull. Although the two pathologists joked that there couldn't have been much to start with. Before we get to our number one dumbest Darwin Award, here- You gonna have the nerve to saw into a live grenade. Oh my God. Here are a few honorable mentions. There's this man who planked on a tiger. There's no way he walked away from that one. Yeah. Then there's this guy who bit a tiger's tail. Mm. Wait, is that the same guy? Poor tiger. Oh, and this woman who got something stuck in her handgun. What? Nice. Okay, so back to the final award in our countdown. Number one, smoking hot. 
Gary Banning from North Carolina was at his friend's house when he spotted a mysterious jar of tasty looking liquid. Assuming it was hot sauce and without bothering to check, he flipped off the lid and started to drink it, but he soon discovered it wasn't hot sauce at all, but a jar of gasoline. The shock of chugging gasoline was too much for Gary, so he spat it out, then tried to calm down with a cigarette. As soon as he lit it, he caught fire and died the next day from his injuries. What? So which of these Darwin Award What? It's no way to be that stupid. <laughs> what? Way too hot spring. Oh, have no. you ever fancied a dip in a hot spring? Yes. I know I have. Yeah. Especially when clothing is optional. Maybe this is what Colin Scott was thinking when he strayed off the trail at Yellowstone in 2016 to go swimming in one of its famous hot springs. Y'all ever drink a female's bath water? Uh, not that I have. I... This activity is forbidden by park rules, but Colin, a former nature reserve volunteer, <laughs> thought he knew better. That is, until he slipped into the Norris Geyser Basin, oh, a no. thermal bath of boiling acidic oh, water with God. below surface temperatures of up to 459 degrees. No. I've heard that some like it hot, but that's just ridiculous. God Sadly damn. for Colin, the only remains found were his wallet and flip-flops. Hey, at least his wallet survived, huh? Anybody going to the movies? Oh boy. <laughs> Number 19. Safety first. If there's one thing I know about safes, it's that they're heavy. I guess someone should have told this hapless Yo. burglar from Indiana, who broke into a man's garage and tried to lift an antique 900 pound safe suspended Damn. on a floor jack. When the homeowner returned to check his garage, he found the Damn. unlucky thief crushed to death. The oh. owner of the safe said that stealing the safe would have been pointless because it was completely empty, crushed to death by an empty safe. I'm sure there's a lesson here somewhere, and I think it's safe to say this burglar learned it. Number what we learned from this clip is get a damn job, nigga! Number 18. Don't forget your pen. There are few things more satisfying than when bullies get what they deserve. Yeah! Especially big ones. Yeah! Cambodian military policeman Kim Sackhorn, nicknamed Big Giant, got exactly that when he tried to extort money and crystal meth from a local dealer. To scare the dealer, Kim pulled the pen from a grenade. Unsurprisingly, this tactic worked, and the dealer handed over the goods. Ken then put the live grenade back in his pocket. Did it ever cross Kim's mind how dumb this was? By the time this massive mobster reached his motorcycle, the grenade exploded, blasting the big giant into tiny little pieces. What? Number seven. Worst bully in the world! Everyone's seen that scene from Breaking Bad where he goes in there with the crystal meth and blows himself up in order to show the drug dealer that he means businesses. And that's understandable, but bro, live grenades don't work the same, buddy. Blasting the big giant into tiny little pieces. Number 17, Runway Cyclist. Unless you've got E.T. in your basket, you probably shouldn't be cycling on an airport runway. No. This advice never reached Brazilian cyclist Marcelo, no. who was crossing an airfield near Sao Paulo while listening no. to his Walkman. What are you doing? Yes, it was 1997, but that's no excuse. The 25-year-old was totally clueless as he collided with the propeller of a landing oh plane, mangling the blades and damaging the wing in the process. Oh. I'd usually say, wear a helmet, folks, but in this case, I'm not sure that would have helped. Oh! Number 16, Fast Food Fatality. In an attempt to rip off their workplace, two managers at Burger King cooked up a whopper of a plan. Staging a fake robbery and arson in order to steal over $4,000 from the restaurant. That's it? So you gonna go to jail five years for armed robbery for one month worth of living expenses? Make it make sense, somebody! 22-year-old night manager Lisa was bound with duct tape no. and shut into the walk-in pool no. by her accomplice. Unluckily for Lisa, the fire department didn't show up until the morning when she was found freezing and semi-conscious. She later died in the hospital from hypothermia. According to investigators, Lisa could have easily freed herself from her bindings and escaped the unlocked refrigerator, which is exactly why she makes the list. What the now, a for effort, baby girl, but a D for dumbass. Number 15, Tiger Toy. Playing with your food is an unattractive habit, but some is creatures it? just can't help it. A I mother in South Africa found this out the hard way after robbing a couple at knife point. 
the mugger fled the scene and clambered over a nearby fence. What he'd forgotten was that he was at Bloemfontein Zoo, and the fences were there for a reason. Suddenly, an ambush of bored Bengal tigers was upon him, and he quickly became their new plaything. After the body was found, a zoo spokesperson said the tigers had been fed the previous afternoon. That's karma for your ass! Tigers are fully fed and still eat your ass off! God damn! Otherwise, there would have been nothing left. Number 14. A Head for Chemistry in the age of pipe blockages and fatbergs, we should know by now not to mess with the sewers. In 2008, a biology teacher from Sofia, Bulgaria was driving home with two friends. Bystanders saw her car come to a sudden stop, okay. and all three passengers got out and started pouring leftover jars of chemicals down a manhole. Wow. These noxious chemicals included diethyl ether and methanol, that both highly good. flammable you liquids. Put none of those the together. cocktail of chemicals in the enclosed space of the sewers caused an explosion so powerful that the manhole cover was launched into the air, instantly decapitating the polluting teacher. Oh the moral God. of the story, don't mess with chemicals or you could lose your head. Number Is it just me or do you guys want to see a picture of what she looked like so we'll know if we should feel bad for her dying or not? Number 13. Flaming Rodeo. If this isn't an example of you should have known better, How you I don't know what it is. In Washington in 2010, what? during the American Sprint Car Series, two right. crew members dreamed up an insane thrill ride. Uh -oh. They poured four gallons of methanol no. into a 55 no. gallon barrel, do sat on the barrel, no. then lit the bong hole. Yeah. These two bright sparks thought the barrel would shoot across the parking lot like a rocket in some kind of fiery rodeo. What? what they'd actually created was a makeshift bomb, which quickly blew them sky high. Both men ended up in the hospital and one of them died. Not sure I want to think about the aftermath between their legs. Ow! Number 12. You're supposed to love and cherish your own Johnston. How are you going to blow this shit off? Suddenly sluggish. Most people wouldn't have the guts to eat a slug. Turns out this guy didn't either. A young rugby player called Sam from Sydney, Australia was at a party in 2010 when the slug sped across the table. His friends dared him to eat it, no. and he did. No. Not long no. afterwards, Sam contracted a rat lungworm, a parasitic worm spread by rodents. No. The parasite infested Sam's brain, putting him in a coma and leaving him paralyzed. Several years later, he died as a result of this prank gone wrong. I'm not sure I even have to tell you this, folks, but seriously, don't eat slugs. So apparently, people will do anything if it's a dare. Next time I hang out with a female, I'm gonna dare her to suck this dick. So brilliant, that could work. I swear to God, I'm gonna do that. Subscribe. Number 11, Headless Chickens. In 1997, a group of co-workers in Holland were on a tour bus, and some of the bolder employees stuck their heads out of the window to enjoy the air. You'd think you'd notice a tunnel approaching down the road, but yeah, two men got their heads out as the bus entered a viaduct. And by this point, it was too late. The two men were not decapitated, but suffered severe head trauma and snapped necks, killing them both instantly. Way to ruin the field trip, guys. Oh my god. Number 10, Fatal oh, Footsie. No. We've all heard stories of idiots playing Russian roulette, but this one. He said Fatal Footsie, bro. Somebody died giving a foot job? How do you mess a foot job up? It's so easy. It's simple. Like, you just. Tops them all. In 1999, Cambodia was littered with all kinds of discarded weaponry after decades of armed conflict. In a place called Sve Riang, three friends had spent the evening drinking. After hours of arguing, one of the men pulled out a 25-year-old unexploded anti-tank mine he what? found in his backyard. The man then tossed it under the table, and the three men began taking turns to first drink, then stomp on the mine. What? Other villagers fled in terror, and minutes later, an enormous explosion occurred, killing all three men. Personally, I think the gene pool might have benefited from this one. Yeah. Don't you? Yeah, they Number needed nine, to die. Domestic disturbance. Complete idiots. Ar I don't understand. What are we winning from this? Arguing with your partner can be an emotional roller coaster, but this man's reaction was shocking. In Buenos Aires, Argentina in 1998, a man decided that the best way to win an argument with his wife was to pick her up and throw her off the balcony. 
they were eight floors up. You won that argument, sir. You going to jail for prison? And you ain't shit for doing that. But she can't talk shit now. But bizarrely, the woman became entangled in the power lines below. In what may have been an effort to save her, or maybe finish her off, the man <laughs> leapt from the balcony, aiming for the <laughs> My nigga tried to people elbow this hole off the damn apartment complex balcony. Oh, you survived? Fuck the fuck. Wires. The airborne abuser missed the wires completely, plunging to his death. Somehow, his wife managed to swing to a nearby balcony and was subsequently rescued. I'm no Buddhist, but that's karma. That's karma, Number eight, bro! Gasso clean. Oh Keeping box God. fresh trainers clean is a must, but this method might be going too far. In 1998, 67-year-old Texan Reva Nix was washing her tennis shoes. Wait for it with gasoline what? when the shoes which she was still wearing were ignited by a nearby candle reva had to run with flaming feet to her neighbor's house what? who quickly doused her feet with a hose it was too late however and reva later died from her burns the local sheriff warned others against using gasoline in this way since it was apparently common practice what? Uh, i guess that's texas for you number seven I don't like Consider it car thief. Some people have pretty twisted moral codes, but this car thief from Pittsburgh had a bit of logic to his larceny. Randy Nestor stole plenty of cars, and whenever a stolen vehicle became hot, he'd torch it. What? Reasoning that the fire damage would help the owners collect on the insurance. That's pretty thoughtful, pretty nice. right? It pretty turns dull. out Randy was the victim of his own virtue when he set fire to a van that he was still inside. No, don't. What are you trying doing? to escape, Randy found that the driver's side handle was broken and the door locked. Randy burned up inside the van and was pretty much killed by his own kindness and <laughs> stupidity. Number six. How do you have it your way yourself, bro? Six. Floridian pigeon. Yeah, it seems that idiots are drawn pigeon, to power pigeon, lines pigeon. like moths to a flame. Here, the infamous Florida man returns with a tale that would have Thomas Edison face palming in his grave. When Elian Garcia Rivera's pet pigeon decided to perch on a power line, he thought the best way to dislodge his feathered friend would be to retrieve a 20 foot long aluminum pool pole and jab it into the high voltage wires. This Floridian only succeeded in turning himself into a human superconductor and was yeah. killed instantly. If only this Florida man had listened a little more in science class. Number five, time zone terrorists. Daylight savings time causes a lot of confusion, but in this instance, it proved fatal. In 1999, Israel turned the clocks back a day early, but Palestinians refused to accept this Zionist time except for four terrorists who'd planned a bombing that day. Their bombs were set to go off at 6.30 p.m., but poor communication meant the would-be bombers were an hour behind schedule. The explosives detonated while the terrorists were en route, preventing any further bloodshed. I think we can say these dummies got what they deserved. A one-way ticket to the afterlife. Number four, faithful flotation. I'll admit, I've tried to walk on water. Anyone who says they haven't taken a run at a pool with the hopes of making it across is probably lying. So when in 2016 a Zimbabwean pastor promised he would walk out into a river and rise above the water, his congregation were intrigued. After fasting for a week, the pastor waded 30 meters into a river known as Crocodile River. You'd think the name might have put him off, but no. Pastor Jonathan was devoured by three hungry crocodiles yeah. before he even had the chance to perform his miracle. That's what the Lord so, would have wanted. So yeah. much for divine intervention. Number three, Peeping Tom. People love to catch a glimpse of something they're not supposed to see, like this Calgary man who died in a shopping mall last year. Though his motives were unknown, I think it's pretty obvious what this guy was up to when he climbed through a vent in order to access the area behind a wall in the women's bathrooms. No. The man became trapped there and was found dead three days later. What? Police have not revealed the cause of death, but it's safe to say this peeping Tom got a little more excitement than he bargained for. <laughs> Number two, just buy a ticket. There are smart ways to save money and there are dumb ways to save money. And then there's this guy. 
Mr. Zhang was visiting Ningbo Younger Zoo in China with his family when he realized he couldn't afford the $20 to buy a ticket for himself. So he doubled back and decided to scale the fence in order to access the zoo. No. After a successful climb, Mr. Zhang landed in the tiger enclosure Damn. and was set up by a trio of tigers who quickly ripped him to pieces. I guess he paid the price after all. Number one, stings in the tail. Damn. The Asian giant hornet is the world's biggest hornet, no. and it's the stuff of nightmares. It is. Large, yeah, like aggressive, that. and venomous, a swarm like of these insects can kill a human, and they do. Around 40 oh. people are killed in Japan each year by hornet stings. So the last thing you should do is bug them. In this hilarious yet shocking video, a Chinese man is shown dancing with a hornet's nest and throwing it about after removing it. If you want to elicit stings from dangerous flying creatures, tearing their house down and juggling with it is a sure way to do it. Even with his protective suit, the man suffers multiple stings and is later shown being carried off on a stretcher, his body stiff and full of venom. I think he needed a better suit. Garbage day, no one likes having to take out the trash for collection. But we don't usually expect to find ourselves carried off alongside our garbage. Man. But for Diego Mata, a combination of heavy drinking and dumpster diving led to exactly that. One fateful evening in March 2019. What was you looking for? CCTV footage taken on the night in Rosemont, Illinois' entertainment district captured the 31-year-old drunkenly climbing into a dumpster around 4 a.m. An hour later, the garbage truck arrived, tipping the contents of the dumpster, including Mata, into its powerful mechanical jaws. Wow. Mata's body was later recovered from a sanitation facility where he was found to have been crushed to death. Nigga. What a rubbish way to go. Nigga. That was a dumb death. Nigga. But you know what's not dumb? Playing Raid Shadow Legends, I'll our sponsor for this I'll video. It's a finalist for Google Play's Best of 2019 User's Choice Award for a reason. If you don't know how to swim, you should probably learn before doing ocean water sports. Yeah. Unfortunately, this didn't occur to Jerry Device in July 2019 when he took to the sea in the jet ski he'd purchased mere hours earlier. Despite his desire to have a Damn. wild time in the water, Device never learned to swim. So Why when he lost control and flipped his new toy, he was thrown into serious peril. Within moments, the no. sea had overwhelmed him and he drowned. What? When you're in Poseidon's house, it pays to be respectful because he can be one remorseless son of a titan. Yep, Deadly hydration. How you die Tina Christofferson was an extremely intelligent woman with a reported IQ of 189. Unfortunately, irrational fear affects even the smartest minds, and a specific fear of stomach cancer was responsible for Tina's demise. She'd seen her mother suffer an agonizing death from the disease, which drove her to obsess over avoiding that fate for herself. She became convinced that she could avoid stomach cancer by intermittently fasting for extended periods in which she would only consume water. During these fasts, she would drink as much as four gallons of water a day. The extended strain of this practice pushed her kidneys into failure, causing water to migrate to her lungs. Despite being on solid ground, the water in Tina's lungs caused her to drown. In the end, her neurotic desperation to avoid death had, in fact, killed her. So remember kids, stay hydrated but not too hydrated, okay? How do you healthy yourself to death? Black Death Dining. Hey, that's racist! Luckily, most of us will never have death. to suffer the disease Please that wiped death. out around half the European population in the 14th century. I'm talking, of course, about the Black Death, or bubonic plague, which is caused by a bacterium called Yersinia pestis. The disease like is spread by fleas carried by rodents, and while we can treat it with antibiotics now, its symptoms spread fast and are extremely painful, deadly, and highly infectious. Over the years, we figured out that, among other methods, to avoid ending up covered in oozing buboes and gangrene, it helps to avoid touching wild rodents. But not only did a Mongolian couple miss the memo in May 2019, they took their ignorance to the next level by consuming the raw kidney of a rodent known as a marmot. Believing the meat to be good for their health, consuming it actually gave both of them bubonic plague. Not only did they both die, they caused a six-day quarantine of locals and tourists who had come into contact with the couple. 
Clearly, there are worse ways to make people suffer from your eating habits than microwaving stanky fish in the office break room. I'd take stinky seafood or punch- Man, you shit for showing that nutty professor clip. Than microwaving stanky fish in the office break room. I'd take stinky seafood or pungent cheese over deadly bacterial rodent disease any day. Pain in the neck. On yeah. a cold night in September 1927, famous French-American dancer Isadora Duncan was preparing for an evening out in a friend's sports car. On their parting, another friend implored Isadora to put a warm cape over her shoulders as the open-top car would run a substantial breeze during the, the drive. Cape? Isadora decided that some stylish neckwear would be sufficient, so she wrapped a long flowing silk scarf around her neck. Why she built like Aunt Jemima off of the syrup bottle? and was ready to go. The driver began to drive off while Isadora said what would indeed be her final goodbyes. But to the horror of her onlooking friends, the scarf was whipped up in the wind and drifted over the edge of the car. It had soon wrapped itself around the open spokes of the vehicle's wheels and was rapidly pulling Isadora onto her shorter and shorter leash. She was yanked out of the vehicle, into the road, and into the car. The no! wheel ran over her neck, breaking it instantly, and she was left wedged in between the wheel and no! the guard. A no! gruesome end and a timeless example no! of the dangers of putting fashion first. Damn, the man. bad boys burning. Who got to keep her car? Does that go to the family? I think she would have wanted me to have it, honestly. I, that's what she would have wanted. I talked to her. Bad. Charles the Bad certainly lived up to his name during his reign as King of Navarre between 1349 and 1387. He was a big fan of cruelty, deception, and murder, either carried out by his own hands or those of assassins. Oh boy, here I go killing again. I say this every time before I play Overwatch. Oh boy, here I go killing again. But his life of narcissism, backstabbing, violence, and hatred took its toll. And by the time he was 54, his health had deteriorated to a point where he could barely move his limbs. With death looming closer by the day, his doting physicians, armed with the highest caliber of medical knowledge at the time, which basically amounted to nothing at all, tried one final experimental method to restore his health. Like some sickly royal Christmas pudding, they wrapped him up tightly in linen cloth that had been soaked in brandy, hoping the strong alcohol would restore some vigor. Unfortunately, the servant tasked with stitching the linen together found she'd used more thread than needed for the process. But instead of cutting and knotting the extra at the end, she decided to burn it with a candle. No! The alcohol caught a- Bro, she honey roasted this nigga! Wow! Light and the king went up in flames, burning to death shortly after. Whether the servant was a bumbling idiot or trained assassin, Charles made a fatal mistake in going along with such unusual and hazardous practices. Practices that would leave him more than a little hot under the collar. The dangers of fast food. Everybody knows too much fast food is bad for us, but in his last moments on earth, Charles Wood Jr. of Velda City, Missouri learned the real dangers of the drive through experience. Wood placed his order at a local jack-in-the-box and pulled up to the collection window. Reaching out of his car window, he realized he was too far away to take his food from the restaurant worker and opened his car door, stretching out to grab his meal. Unfortunately, in doing so, he rested his foot on the accelerator of his car. The car was in reverse and was sent barreling backwards into a tree. Oh Wood God. was sandwiched between the two objects oh. and later succumbed to his injuries. Oh. The lesson here? Never order fast food, especially oh. if you're the type to use the accelerator as a footrest. Oh. Dog's dinner. You'd think that an esteemed, respected philosopher who made great progress in our understanding of what it means Damn. to exist would be met with an esteemed, respectful end. But for ancient Greek philosopher Heraclitus, this was far from the case. Though he had spent his whole life thinking and reflecting, he really should have thought harder about his self-prescribed cure when he developed dropsy. Dropsy involves the accumulation of fluid under the skin and inside the cavities of the body. What is it is that? often a symptom of serious lung, heart, or liver diseases. According to sources from the time, Heraclitus came to the conclusion that burying himself in a shed full of cow manure would help draw out some of the fluid by warmth. Unfortunately, Heraclitus was unable to get himself free after hours spent in the dung heap and in his trapped state was unable to defend himself when a pack of dogs came sniffing what around. The they devoured him alive, despite the notably pungent aftertaste. What? It's a bit nutty. Oh, oh God! Pillow armor. Oh. We've all made up some pretty oh. ridiculous excuses to get out of things. Where are there dogs that eat poop? 
or humans. But one Turkish man in July 2019 went way beyond the regular. Sorry boss, I'm sick, totally not hung over or anything. After being sentenced to community service for wounding someone in a fight, Zafir Kazoo decided that he just didn't feel like doing it. So he and his friends hatched a uh, brilliant plan. By strapping two pillows to his back for protection and getting his friends to shoot him with a shotgun, Zaffer hoped he'd be just injured enough to get out of community service. What? It worked. He certainly never had to do community service again because he died almost instantly. On top of that, his friend was injured from the blast too and was also charged with his friend's murder. Yep, humans can really be that dumb. Duh. Holding it in. When you gotta go, you gotta go. It's the opening line of every religious text ever written. Take my word for it. But in 1601, a Danish astronomer and alchemist called Tycho Brahe chose to disobey this great nugget of wisdom. He's mostly remembered for his comprehensive collection of empirical observations about the stars in space, but perhaps the most astronomical thing he ever encountered was the size of his bladder following his final meal. You see, Tycho was a stickler for the rules of being a nobleman to the extreme. While enjoying a feast, the astronomer found himself needing to use the little boy's room which was, at the time, little more than a hole in the floor. However, through Tycho's interpretation of nobleman etiquette, he convinced himself it would be incredibly rude to leave the feast for such a vulgar act of urination. So he remained in place for several hours, only to be able to relieve himself on his return home. But he found that he was only able to pee in very short, agonizing spurts. Within a few days, he was dead. Holding it in too long had led Tycho's bladder to burst, resulting in a very painful death. Rather than worrying about both his P's and Q's, perhaps he should have just stuck to the P's. Kill it with fire! In May 2019, Ooh, is there a, spider? a 63 year old man discovered that his basement was infested with bugs. Yeah. Fancying himself a bit of a DIY exterminator, he located the source of the infestation and entered the crawl space with a propane torch in hand. No. Shooting flames willy nilly like a dragon no. with allergies, he soon found that more than the bugs were catching a light. As the flammable materials lining the crawl space caught a light, he found himself unable to stop, drop, and roll as the space was far too tight for such gymnastics and he was burnt to a crisp. In the process, he also caused $60,000 of damage to his house. But hey, at least the bugs are gone, right? Smack talking the gators. While it's true that some people can't help being stupid, other people are willingly stupid with an infuriating dash of arrogance thrown in. After a 10-foot alligator had been spotted in a Texas marina, staff put up a warning sign. This was not enough to scare off one local man on a night in July 2015, and neither were the repeated verbal warnings issued by a marina employee. The employee looked on in horror as the man responded with, F*** the alligators, and jumped straight into the marina. Almost immediately, he screamed out for help, but it was too late. Within minutes, the man was floating, motionless, yep. face down on the surface, dead. Yep, ain't nobody jumping in. I'm not helping. Clearly, alligators take profanity very seriously. Watch your profanity. <laughs> How to hypnotize an elephant. If you're an animal hypnotist in training, test your skills on your cat, or a neighbor's dog, or even a zoo animal safely behind protective glass. Don't try to hypnotize a wild elephant. It seems unbelievable, but in January 2019, a Sri Lankan man did exactly that. The man was traveling with his family when he spotted the huge animal grazing in a field. He approached the animal, getting its attention, and got closer and closer until the elephant charged. Hoping to hypnotize the elephant back into placidity, the man performed a sudden hand gesture and stood his ground. Unfortunately, this worked about as much as you'd expect. The elephant trampled yeah. the man to death yeah. while his family looked on in horror. The mistake was clear. He forgot his hypnotist pendant. I'm sure he would have been just fine if he'd started swinging one of those. It's not like giant, wild, tusk beasts are dangerous after all. Leap of Faith In May of 2019, a car chase left a criminal in a tough spot. The Brooklyn man was wanted for a carjacking when he made his first dumb move, crashing into a police car, triggering a high-speed chase. His second and most lasting mistake came later, after the pursuit left him trapped between multiple pursuing police cars on the Brooklyn Bridge. Rather than hand himself over, he went with the Grand Theft Auto method. He assumed that jumping over the railing down to the ground below would allow him to escape with little more than a scratch or two. So over he went, and while he did indeed get away, he did so in a body bag. <laughs> Remember your roots. There are many embarrassing ways to die. 
but falling victim to the wrath of a root vegetable has to be near the top. When out on a hunting trip in 1881, British politician Sir William Penn Galloway entered the annals of ridiculous history. When he slipped and fell onto a turnip, the turnip, renowned by his fellow turnips as a violent brute, caused no. severe internal injuries to the politician, and he died that day, age 74. How you die from slipping on a turnip, bro? That's disrespectful. All the stuff we have done for turnips, all the foods we have put them in, turnips are famous now. Think about it, and they gonna kill one of us. It's messed up. Turns out vegetables aren't so good for you after all. World's Longest Breath Holder I could think of better ways to spend a Saturday night than a breath-holding contest, but apparently boredom was at an all-time high for a New Jersey man in August 2018. Rather than holding the competition between friends on the safety of dry land, the man decided to hold his breath underwater on Lake St. Clair in Georgia. Seven minutes passed before anyone noticed anything was wrong. What? And this time, the undisputed winner of the contest had fallen unconscious and drowned. Proving Are you serious? This dude stayed underwater? Proving that real winners never give up. Cigarette burns. Never give up! Hospitals are usually safe places never for treatment up. and recovery, but a questionable decision made by an elderly lady in Halternam See, Germany, brought a quick end to her own treatment plan in 2018. The lady, who was wheelchair bound from sickness, wheeled herself outside for a nice, relaxing smoke. She seemed to forget that she was wearing an oxygen ventilator, which ignited when she lit her cigarette, setting fire to the plastic upholstery of her wheelchair. She was engulfed in deadly flames and scorching plastic and died soon after. Everyone knows smoking's bad for your health, but usually its effects aren't so explosive. Not the bees. Picture this relaxing scene. You're lying down on a comfy massage table, enjoying some nice therapeutic music when someone forcibly stings you with multiple bees. Surprisingly, this is something people willingly go through on a regular basis, no. supposedly to relieve Why? stress and muscle tension, no. and is a form of alternative medicine known as live bee acupuncture. All the bees that are used die in the process, but in 2018, they finally got their own revenge. You see, every time a person is stung by a bee, their chances of suffering an allergic reaction increase. But for one woman who was unaware of this fact, her reaction came as a total surprise after having the treatment so many times. The woman immediately lost consciousness following one of the stings and soon died of a severe allergic reaction. Don't mess with bees. Nick Cage knows this and so should you. Escalator to Heaven You've heard of the Stairway to Heaven, but what about the Fast Track version? The only catch is, you never actually get to the top. This is the fate that met the guitar player from a heavy metal band whose name is so obscene, YouTube would implode if I were to say it. A musical career dedicated to causing as much controversy as possible culminated in a rather unclimactic end when he attempted to ride his way along the rail of an escalator. He lost his balance, plummeted over the edge, and died on impact. Oh! His head struck a food court table, presumably turning some unfortunate kid's Happy Meal into a horror meal. <laughs> Taking selfies to new heights. This guy's bad jokes are so good, bro. Turning someone's Happy Meal into a horror meal. <laughs> but apparently, these great lengths should never exceed 99 feet. The world learned this fact in 2018 when a British woman and her Australian boyfriend were found dead on a beach in Portugal. Piecing the evidence together, police concluded that the couple had been sat atop a 100-foot wall overlooking the beach when they dropped the phone they'd been snapping vacation pics on. They both reached to grab the phone, which had landed on a ledge just below them. Unfortunately, they both lost their balance and plunged the full distance to the ground below. As if to symbolize technology's inevitable takeover of the human race, the phone the couple gave their lives trying to save remained on the wall, unscathed. Wow! Trouble in the tub. Wow! We're taught from a young age that water and electricity don't mix, but for some people, this never quite sinks in. For some, the comfort of having an electronic device on hand at all times overrides the need to, you know, remain alive. A Londoner learned the error of this mindset in 2017 when he tried charging his phone while in the bath. No. As he relaxed in the no. tub, he balanced an extension cord on his chest, keeping it out of the water. What happened next is unclear, but the situation isn't too hard to fathom. Whether he slipped or whether he absentmindedly dunked his phone in the water, he was killed by the ensuing shock. Fussy Eater Everybody loves the hearty goodness of a home-cooked meal, assuming at least one person in the house can cook. 
but renowned mathematician Kurt Godel took his love of his wife's home cooking to ridiculous levels. Despite, or perhaps because of, his brilliance as a mathematician, Godel was an extremely paranoid man. His paranoia grew to the point where in his later years, he refused to eat anything that hadn't first been tasted or prepared by his wife. Believing himself to be at the center of a poisoning plot, when his wife was hospitalized for six weeks in 1977 and hence was unable to cook for her husband, Godel stopped eating. By the end of January 1978, he had died of malnutrition, weighing only 65 pounds when he died. In the end, through his desperation to avoid being murdered, he was the one responsible for his own death. It really goes to show, if you want something done right, do it yourself. She must have been a good ass cook. Hungry for more? While some dumb deaths are caused by no eating at all, occasionally someone will kick the bucket because of the total opposite. In this case, the bucket was filled to the brim with sticky, delicious sweet rolls. Adolf Frederick, king of Sweden from 1751 to 1771, wasn't a particularly good king. He was regarded as lacking the aptitude, fortitude, and integrity necessary for successful kingship. But what he lacked as a king, he made up for with his appetite. He was a lover of food with a sweet tooth, and it could never be said that his eyes were bigger than his belly. But why the amount of food he consumed on his last meal in February 1771 did exceed the limitations of his large belly, he finished it nonetheless. After a heaping feast of seafood, sauerkraut, and champagne, he moved on to dessert. This consisted of no less than 14 Swedish sweet rolls, all dipped in hot milk flavored with cinnamon and raisins. Yes, While he was reportedly yes. stockpiling for the Christian tradition of Lent, he clearly overshot his mark as his digestive system completely shut down and he died. Just goes to show, death by cake isn't as sweet as it sounds. Unless you're playing Portal, in which case that bitch Gladys got something coming to her because I never got that birthday cake I was promised at the end. Gonna have her to give us a music video showing us pictures of the delicious cake. Never let us get to eat the shit or taste it. Freaking dick. A cut above the vest. Nobody wants to be conned when making a purchase. Indeed, being sold a stab-proof vest that offers the protection of a wet noodle is hardly an ideal scenario. But it should go without saying that testing the stabability of such vests should be done with at least one qualifying factor. Taking the vest off first. Unfortunately, that first rule of Stab Club whistled in one ear, through the empty skull cavity, and out the other ear of one Englishman in 2018. Mistakenly believing his jacket was stab proof, the man took a knife and plunged it into his jacket while at the kitchen what? table. It turned out the jacket wasn't stab proof, and funnily enough, neither was he. Before I get to the dumbest death magnets of the bunch, let's take a look at some contenders who somehow managed to avoid qualifying for a Darwin Award by surviving their stupidity. This electrician clearly trained with the best, because after all, there's no better insulator than a nice cool puddle of muddy water. Another top of the class graduate of the Elite Electricians Academy is this fellow, who's also in on the secret that water and electricity are actually a great mix. But the rubber industry doesn't want you to know that. He's even smart enough to not be wearing shoes. For any Darwin Award nominees watching, that was a joke. Anyway, this next close contender seems to be pulling a prank with a fuel-depleted chainsaw held in the penis in this much jeopardy bro anyway this next close contender seems to be pulling a prank with a fuel depleted chainsaw held alarmingly close to his nether region no no no, no. the risk to reward ratio of this particular prank earns this guy a firm position in the at risk darwin award survivors club that's just no, 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 a new place no, no, no. for a chainsaw no. joke or not the final oh my god okay so he lived oh my god i was scared at risk survivor is this fellow who let rage overcome any shred of rational thought while his friend drives, he takes the noble position of car puncher, hanging out of the car window and attacking the hard walls of another vehicle with his bare hands, like the genius he so clearly is. As his car swerves, he accidentally opens his door and tumbles gracefully onto the highway. Hey, at least he stuck the landing. And if this is his reaction to a bit of road rage, I feel like his Darwin Award isn't too far away over the horizon. Stupid! A bridge Stupid. too far. Video games, Stupid. movies, and TV shows have led us all to believe that clearing a rising drawbridge in a car is a viable feat. It isn't, but that realization never occurred to a couple of wannabe Texan stuntmen who put their inflated senses of their own abilities to the test in May 2019. 
Witnesses reported seeing a car's passenger lift the barrier of the Black Bayou Drawbridge in Louisiana before the car sped off up the rising ramp. Now admittedly, some people do occasionally survive these jumps, like this distracted driver who didn't even realize the bridge had begun to rise before cruising over the top to the other side. But these people are the minority and should be taken as representative of the majority. Because the majority, like our Texan friends, follow a learning curve that's steeper than the downward path of their car. However, any learning was short-lived in this case as the Texan pair were trapped in their car after it failed to make the jump to the other side. They sank and soon drowned. Put simply, they were neither fast nor furious enough. <laughs> To put it frankly, they were neither fast nor furious enough. <laughs> Quick exit. As far as humanity's greatest intellectuals are concerned, it's fair to assume none of them have been regular participants in eating contests. But while the whole concept is pretty dumb, one Indian man learned in 2019 that it can also be fatal. After a contests. disagreement took place between the man and his friend in a marketplace in India's Jaunpur district, they decided there was only one way to settle it an egg eating contest. With a $30 bet on the table for whoever could eat 50 the fastest, the men began scoffing hard boiled eggs. $30. While devouring his 42nd egg, one of the eaters collapsed and fell unconscious and died soon afterwards in the hospital. His body couldn't deal with the dense load of 42 eggs, which could have weighed as much as six pounds. So remember, if you want a really filling breakfast that won't kill you, don't exceed 41 eggs. Bird brained idea. Another case of eggs gone wrong occurred back in 2006 in Doncaster, England. A man who had a string of convictions for stealing rare protected bird eggs was on the hunt for illicit eggs in a local forest. What is up with dudes and eggs, man? I think it's a fetish. It usually is. Spotting what he presumed to be a sparrow hawk's nest, the 62-year-old began climbing the branches of a tree in hope of something valuable. See, look at the way he's climbing that tree, man. He's trying to have sex with these birds' children, bro. As he approached the top, however, First an avoidable one. disaster struck. You see, this bird egg bandit had long-standing <laughs> issues with high blood pressure, which often led to dizzy spells and fainting. Why he'd choose a career that involved climbing up precarious tree branches while battling a tendency to randomly pass out is anybody's guess. But it doesn't take too much guessing to figure out what happened next. At the top of the tree, he passed out, plummeting to the ground, breaking his ribs and having his heart punctured by branches on the way down. Carmel was clearly on the bird's side because the egg thief died soon afterwards. Connection issues. Birds are the worst. I once got attacked by this flock of geese. It was like a 40 pack. And they jumped me just cause I was feeding them hot Cheetos. The female I was with didn't even try to help me fight off the geese. Of course I ran. I wasn't about to fight no ducks. I've seen videos, usually Pornhub. The reason grappling down the sides of buildings is possible in movies is that the characters typically use state-of-the-art equipment that they know they can rely on. Sadly, a 47-year-old man from northern France seemed to miss this important qualifying factor in 2017 when he attempted his own Mission Impossible-style escape. The man had been locked up in his room by his mother to try to control his hard-drinking lifestyle, so he hatched an escape plan. The grounded 47-year-old decided that rappelling down from the ninth-story apartment window would be the best way out. What are you doing, sir? Unfortunately, he didn't have any heavy-duty steel wire available and yep. opted to use a simple Ethernet cable instead. Of course, it's yep. unclear what he tried to attach it to, but the makeshift yep. abseiling equipment snapped mm -hmm. almost instantly yeah. and he plummeted to the pavement yeah. below. Guess yeah. his mother's plan worked. He never drank again. <laughs> Heat treatment. In 2019 in Bengaluru, India, an act of lethal stupidity brought one man's life to a rather heated end. While cleaning out a chimney at his home using petrol-fueled cleaning equipment, the irresistible call of nicotine came a-knockin'. Disregarding the common sense warning against using naked flames near petrol-fueled machines, he pulled out his lighter to spark up a cigarette. Unfortunately, in the process of loading up the cleaning equipment, he'd accidentally doused himself in a considerable amount of petrol. Yeah. The moment he lit his cigarette, his clothes went up in flames, and within minutes, <sighs> he'd burnt to death. Not yeah. only did he die a totally avoidable, agonizing death, the smoke he released probably undid a fair chunk of his cleaning work, too. Blocked up. The obesity epidemic is a very modern problem arising from our species' transition into the double-edged sword of having a constant abundance of food. 
But while heart disease and diabetes are typical thoroughfare for the obese, one woman's excessive weight presented an additional fatal issue, one of logistics. When the 30 stone woman from Dorset, England went into cardiac arrest in January 2016, the medics who arrived were presented with a unique predicament. Because of her weight, it was almost impossible to lug her outside to the emergency vehicles. A long series of proposed solutions ensued, including a suggestion that firefighters remove a window to hoist her down. Hey Tom, I look, let the slack loose. I put a cable around the hole. I want you to pull. Now when I say go, you press the gas pedal as hard as you can. This bitch is huge as shit. All right, look. But before something could be decided, it was too late. Thanks to the unexpected obstacles and delays her obesity caused, the woman died an otherwise preventable death before she could reach hospital. Unhappy accidents. Please tell me it's poop. I haven't eaten in hours. We've all claimed to be dying from embarrassment at some point after a particularly humiliating event in the public eye, but tripping in the school corridor or accidentally farting on a first date usually doesn't prove fatal in a literal sense. For one 69-year-old Florida man, though, a supremely embarrassing episode in 2016 spelled his end. After doing his business in a Walgreens restroom, staff were appalled to find the stall looking like an explosion at the chocolate factory. What? Staff called him back to the scene of the crime and demanded very publicly that he clean up his awful mess. He eventually obliged, but the sheer embarrassment took its toll. According to his widow, the emotional distress of the incident was responsible for the man's death soon afterwards, and she filed a lawsuit against Walgreens on this basis. Indeed, distress can cause cardiac arrest in extreme cases, and if there was ever a legit reason to die of embarrassment, it'd be this guy's bathroom misadventure. Goes to show, if you must leave a mess in the public restroom, have a rapid escape plan prepared. Alternative Medicine of all the things to be skeptical of, the meticulously tested, highly regulated treatments of modern medicine are a very poor choice. While mistrust of certain scientific methods of treatment is often a problem of ignorance and misinformation, it can prove a fatal error of judgment when the only alternative is death. Case in point, after being diagnosed with breast cancer in 2016, a British mother decided against conventional treatments like chemotherapy and surgery. She decided the natural remedies like raw turmeric, iodine-rich brown seaweed, and a vegan diet would be a much better treatment plan. Unsurprisingly, she died in 2019 after the cancer spread throughout her body. It was a heartbreaking story of willful ignorance that left the child motherless. There's nothing funny about this one, folks. It's simply a reminder that science exists for very good reasons, which become clear when people choose to ignore it. Just plain stupid. I'm no aviation expert, but I'd say if you're up in the air and fuel begins to slosh around your feet in the cockpit, you probably have a problem. Unfortunately, one pilot refused to take that specific problem seriously despite the insistence of airport mechanics after he touched down to refuel on a one-man cross-country flight in 2015. Before the appalled mechanics at Missoula International Airport had a chance to intervene, the Bucker Youngmeister aircraft was back on the runway. The pilot insisted he was in too much of a hurry to carry out repairs and headed straight on to the next leg of his journey. But the plane would reach its final destination even sooner than expected. 10 seconds after takeoff, the plane came crashing back down and exploded in a ball of flames. It only takes a glance at the wreckage to be able to guess whether or not the hasty pilot survived. Spoiler, he didn't. One in the chamber. When it comes to irresponsible behavior, anything relating to guns lands at the top of the idiot list. But the level of stupidity in this story will blow your mind. While enjoying a few beers in Brevard County, Florida, a man and his friend began playing around with a handgun. After removing the magazine from the gun, the owner wanted to be extra safe and make sure there wasn't still a bullet in the chamber. After all, you can never be too careful. To test this, he jokingly held the gun up to his temple, presumably certain he'd already unloaded it. In a lighthearted jest, he pulled the trigger. With a bang, that party was over. The bright spark was dead by the time police arrived on scene. If there was ever a poster child for gun safety, it'd be this guy. Off-roading. In 2018, a Florida woman learned the hard way that trains don't play fair in a race. While the guardrails were down at a newly built crossing, the lady made a serious error of judgment, deciding she could cross the tracks before the train reached her. But as you probably guessed, guardrails are there for a reason. That reason being, if you cross while they're down, you're probably going to die. That's exactly what happened. The woman and her bike met their end with the train right on schedule. A Royal Romance Young love is a powerful thing, and if the case of King Louis III of France is anything to go by, 
Even royals aren't safe from its dangerous snares. In 882 CE, at the lustful age of 18, Louis fell for a girl in Saint Denis on the outskirts of Paris. One day he spotted her making her way through town and mounted his horse to pursue her. But with his attention totally fixed upon his love interest, he failed to spot the low-hanging lentil of a doorway ahead of him. Moving at speed, he crashed headfirst into the frame and fell, fatally fracturing his skull. He died soon afterwards, proving once and for all that love really hurts. Damn, love is blind. Unforgettable entrance. After kicking her boyfriend out of her house in November 2007, a Florida woman hadn't hoped to see him on the premises again for a while. But after leaving the house for a few hours and returning, the woman was shocked to see her boyfriend again so soon. Only he wasn't pleading with her to let him back in. It seemed he'd made the decision to enter the house by any means necessary and failed. You see, he'd tried to enter through the cat flap, presumably hoping to unlock the door. He dived in, got one arm through, followed by his head, and gotten stuck. In this embarrassing position, he died, presumably from asphyxiation. Although stupidity hasn't been ruled out as the main cause of death. One last trick. It's pretty obvious that without the right amount of practice and preparation, attempting death-defying stunts can be incredibly stupid and dangerous. For an Indian escape artist by the name of Chonko Lahiri, an attempt to emulate the great masters like Harry Houdini ended in disaster in 2019. Lahiri was lowered into the strong currents of the Huli River near Hawa, India, with his hand and feet tied. He was expected to escape and resurface soon after, but onlookers grew concerned after 15 minutes with no sign of the illusionist. He wouldn't resurface until much later when police pulled his lifeless body from the river. Officials stated that Lahiri's cumbersome outfit combined with the strong currents of the river made an escape nearly impossible. Without the necessary preparations, Lahiri seemed to have grossly underestimated the difficulty of the stunt and fell victim to his own ego. Really though, if being tied up and thrown into a river seems like anything other than a bad idea, then... Stop it. Get some help. Cut of the cash. Hurting yourself as an insurance scam is never clever, but an Italian man achieved maximum stupidity in 2001 with what may be the dumbest money-making scheme of all time. After taking out several policies with different insurance companies, the man had asked his cousin to cut his leg off with a chainsaw. No! He'd hoped to cash in for over half a million dollars no! on the injury with the claims of being permanently disabled by the so-called accident. $500,000 is not enough money. But while the DIY amputation was being performed, extreme blood loss set in and the would-be fraudster died from his gruesome injuries. His cousin, fittingly, was arrested for the psychotically stupid act and he didn't even manage to saw all the way through. If you want something done, do it yourself, I guess. That's some stupid shit, man. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. It's your boy Blast from Stage D. Twist.